Uh, thanks for having me. Uh, it's good to be here. Uh, so uh, my uh, CEO, Lucas, already kind of gave an overview, um, but I'll touch upon what a vCluster is to some extent for those of you that might have missed that. Um, but I want to talk about why, why a vCluster is good for a demo environment. A lot of the characteristics that we're going to talk about that I'm going to talk about um, are good for a lot of use cases. But uh, this is something that's near and dear to my heart because I'm in pre -sale, technical pre-sales and I do demos with vCluster every day. Um, before that, as, as was mentioned, I was at CloudBees and I did demos all the time as well, helped manage demo environments. I didn't use vCluster. I wish I had it then. Um, so what are some of the char characteristics of an effective demo environment? Um, they need to be consistent. You don't want surprises when you're giving a demo um, to, to somebody. Um, so you need to know what's going to be there, what's going to work. Uh, it needs to be fast. Um, I spin up multiple demo environments every day. Uh, maybe not in the past, but vCluster makes that possible. We'll talk about how. Um, Self-contained. Uh, you can't have like a, a one giant demo environment that people share. You have to have something that um, is reusable by multiple users at the same time, um, same minute, the same you know hour. Um, cost effective. You can't spend more on your demo environments than what you're bringing in in revenue, right? So you, there's definitely, you got to have the cost effectiveness to demo environments. And finally, they need to be manageable. Um, you need to, easy to update. They have to have the latest product features, the, you know, the, the, the latest technologies integrated with them. Um, so all those features are very important to any demo environment, whether it's on Kubernetes or not. So uh, I'm not going to spend a lot of time here. You can come to our booth if you have more questions, if you missed Lucas's talk. But basically, a vCluster is a virtual cluster where the control plane is a pod that runs in a host cluster. So they spin up really quickly, um, but they still offer a, a level of isolation because they have a dedicated AP, Kubernetes API server, controller. Um, so if you didn't know it was a vCluster, you wouldn't know it. You'd give a vCluster to somebody, you give them the cube context, and it looks like a full-blown Kubernetes cluster to them. So why vCluster for demo environments? And by the way, again, I use it every day for, for de I'm actually demoing vCluster on vCluster, but that's a little meta, but that's a whole other story. Um, so any product that, it, that runs on Kubernetes is a great, uh, you know, product to run in a vCluster for demo purposes because it's consistent. vCluster instances are easy to reuse and are predictable. They run as pod again in an isolated namespace. The isolation um, prevents interference. You can run multiple vCluster-based demo environments on the same host cluster without any interference with each other even different versions of the same product. So it makes it easy to maintain reliable environments as code. Uh, and again, uh, actually, I spun an environment up. I, you know, I'm not going to be able to demo as part of this lightning talk, um, but I spun a, uh, an environment up. And if you come by the, our uh, table, I'd be happy to show you um, that in five minutes or less, I basically have a full-fledged demo environment because they're fast. Again, because it's just a pod, uh, you know, the V cluster spins up in a minute or less. Um, then whatever additional workloads you have are also just pods that are running in that vCluster. Um, the architecture eliminates the need to have separate nodes, and that's one thing that makes it fast. You're not spinning up a, a bunch of no, new nodes necessarily. It's just reusing capacity in your existing node pools. Um, and it's built for speed uh, because the workloads um, of, are actually synced you know, from the vCluster virtually to the underlying host cluster. They run without any performance degradation. You're not losing any performance by running your demo in a vCluster versus running it directly on the physical cluster. They're self-contained. Uh, again, we've covered a lot of the same points. They're repeated in all these different characteristics uh, because of the architecture of vCluster. Makes them ideal for demo environments. Also makes it very easy to manage them as code, which is really important uh, to keep dem demo environments up to date, to add new scenarios, add new use cases to your demo environment, because it all can be done as code. Um, which I can also show you. Uh, basically, I spin up a copy of a template, a GitHub repository template, and then create my demo environment from that templated repository um, for every demo I create. And it's all automated and all based on GitOps. Cost effective. Again, it's just a pod. We're using nodes. You can put, spin them down. You can put them to sleep. Um, so they're not in all the pods of the workload and the control plane spin down to zero. So it really helps to make them super cost effective versus spinning up, well, at CloudBees, I'd spin up multiple GKE clusters for demos or for workshops, and we had, you know, a bunch of GKE clusters that we were paying for. And they're manageable. So, uh, you know, because of the GitOps, because they're just Kubernetes resources at the end of the day, Helm charts, uh, manifest, um, the same Kubernetes resources that you're used to working with, it just happens that they're being virtualized and giving you the advantages of all these characteristics that I spoke about today. 
So again, um, in closing, uh, Matt time, but it's ideal because they're predictable. They're fast, they're isolated, uh, they share infrastructure, and finally, they're easy to manage. So if you have any questions about vCluster, please come find us. I'd love to talk more about any other use cases that you're interested in. Thank you.